Hello there, Evie here. Welcome to an unboxing, mounting, and testing of the Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim. If you want to check out thermal testing results, then head towards the end of the video. If you want to check out the unboxing and the building process, then just continue watching from here and check out the end for an outro where I have a slightly more comfortable angle for me to do these talking things. Uh, I thought this was a good idea, and now I'm regretting it. So, um, so yeah. Thanks for watching the video, I will skip this intro now as soon as I can. Uh, if for your interest, it's, the CPU is actually being cooled at 28 degrees on this, and it's running at its lowest speed of 800 RPM, which I think is pretty impressive. But then again, when it goes inside a case, that would get worse because the case has restrictions and that sort of thing, so bear that in mind when buying this and any cooler. I'll check you in a second for the rest of the video and the unboxing, and hope you enjoy it. See you then. The Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim is enclosed in a fairly well designed box to suit the product and claims an ability to cool the 120 watt TDP CPU. Which means it should be more than capable of handling the 90 watt 6700K we'll be testing with it later. Opening up the package, we can take a first look at what the cooler looks like inside. I'm not a huge fan of creating long drawn out unboxings, so I'll do my best to stick to the important stuff without losing any detail. Inside the box you'll see the CPU cooler, a 92mm fan, a manual which includes information such as installation instructions and the warranty, and lastly a sealed bag that holds two fan clips and a bracket to allow for compatibility with AMD sockets. The complete list of sockets is available shown at the bottom of the screen. Let's take a look closer at the cooler itself. The Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim, including the fan, stands at 125mm tall, 97mm wide and 82mm thick. This makes it a fair amount smaller than the Hyper 212 EVO reviewed previously, but the Pure Rock Slim has a much higher fin density than the Hyper 212 EVO. We'll see how these variables pan out when we compare the results later on. Straight out of the box there is a plastic shroud covering the base, which has a pre-applied thermal paste. However, due to compatibility issues in the last video of the Corsair Air 240, we used the paste then. But that doesn't really matter since we're going to be using the same thermal paste across all CPU tests regardless, to get a true comparison between the coolers by removing the variable of the thermal paste. The stock pre-installed mounting mechanism for Intel sockets, which we'll be using, uses push pins that are not too dissimilar to an Intel stock cooler. They're functional but not amazing, we'll look more into these later on. Before we move on, the grooves to the top of the base plate are for mounting the AMD bracket seen earlier, and the underside of the base plate reveals the screws that fix the Intel brackets to the base plate and the smooth flat surface of the base plate, which you may notice doesn't create direct heat pipe to CPU contact like the Hyper 212 EVO does, but instead opts for moulding the base plate around the heat pipes. But like I mentioned in the Hyper 212 EVO review, that's probably down to a patent reason rather than anything else, and there are plenty of fantastic coolers around with this design, so don't feel that this is favouritism towards the Hyper 212 EVO. Checking out the top of this cooler, you can see that the tips of the heat pipes have been finished off with an aluminium cap, which is fantastic for a cooler around £20. However, I would have liked to seen the Be Quiet logo either cut out of or pressed into the top fin, rather than have it painted on, which you can see by looking at the U, is pretty easy to scuff and damage. Moving on to the 92mm fan, after testing with the fan running at full speed, I'm happy to report that it's very quiet. It's made with a nice quality of plastic and has a pleasant matte finish. The fan blades have an interesting undulating surface which looks pretty cool when the fan is running, which you can check out towards the end of the video. The label of the fan itself shows a 2000 RPM speed, but by looking at the webpage of the fan itself, it would appear that the fan operates at ranges between 800 and 1900 RPM, which means it operates within the tolerance of 2000 RPM stated on the label, which is completely fine by me. But it would appear that the fan isn't able to slow itself down any lower than 800 RPM, but it's also worth noting that it's really quiet at this speed so it won't need replacing for noise issues if you're going for a quiet build. All of this from a fan that only costs around £8 individually. And of course we have a black 4-pin PWM connector which enables you to use a CPU fan curve to control the speed of the fan, and the connector itself is on the end of a roughly 22cm long cable. And just before we move off the fan, before we move on to mounting it to the test bench for testing, it'll be secured to the cooler with these fan clips. Alright, with the unboxing out of the way, let's mount and test the Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim on the standard test bench for this channel. The test bench consists of an Asus Z170 Pro Gaming motherboard with a 91W TDP i7-6700K CPU which is locked at a stock 4GHz at 1.23V without turbo boost. And in order to eliminate the thermal output of the EVGA GTX 1070 for the win graphics card, it's being water-cooled with the fans pushing the air through the chassis and away from the CPU cooler itself. 
And to round off the highest thermal output elements of the system, we have 24GB of DDR4. The largest of the RAM sticks is what I would call a medium profile G-Skills Ripjaws 5, but RAM is not being pushed during this test, this is just a disclaimer if anything. So let's get on with mounting the cooler. As mentioned earlier, we're not testing the cooler with pre-applied thermal paste. Since we want to eliminate thermal paste as a variable, with all of these coolers, we're going to be using a pretty standard performance Arctic MX2 thermal compound. Unfortunately, since I have a 65 gram tube, it's pretty tricky to apply the perfect amount, but too much makes no difference compared to the perfect amount, so this isn't an issue. Apart from it might be a bit annoying to clean up afterwards. Mounting this cooler takes pretty much no time at all if it all goes smoothly. Since it has push pins to secure it to the motherboard, it's simply a case of lowering it onto the CPU so the push pins align with the mounting holes, and as long as the posts are primed, you can just push down on the pins until they click into place. It's best to push opposites down at the same time to spread the thermal paste out evenly and keep the pressures on the sockets relatively even. Unfortunately, I've had some issues with one of these push pins in particular. I can't see a manufacturing defect, but it takes way more force to push down than all the other pins. You can see the amount of force being applied to the motherboard is quite substantial, and I wasn't sure that I'd be able to fix it down without a bit of surgery on the clip. Luckily that wasn't required and the pin snapped into position, after applying a force that I wasn't completely happy with. Just so we're clear, it didn't kill the board and the system started without any issues. As for the fan, with the graphics card in place, this one was a little tricky to fix to the cooler. Unlike with the clips on the Hyper 212 EVO that secure to the fan first, these wire clips just hook onto the fan and the cooler simultaneously. I found the best way to mount the fan was to lower the fan with the hooks in the fan and then do your best to hook the clips into the grooves of the cooler simultaneously. Once the fan is in place, you can take a step back and admire. Admittedly, the fan is a little lower than it should be, but the lower half of the cooler is covered, which is the main portion that needs covering. So all that's left to do is to connect it to the CPU fan header if you want to control the fan with a CPU fan curve. You can choose other headers, but the CPU header is generally a guaranteed PWM header on most motherboards. And with the installation complete, we can throw it through the standard test and check out the results in a minute. Since there aren't any included fan clips for an additional fan, the only test we can perform is the As It Comes test, which only tests coolers with the fans that they come with. So you can see here that it came out of the Prime95 small FFTS torture test with an average temperature during the final minute of testing across all cores at 68.1 degrees Celsius. This is a far cry from the thermal throttling experienced in the Corsair Air 240, but a different motherboard was used which has a slightly different setup, so the two thermal tests cannot be compared but we can compare it to the Hyper 212 EVO that has been tested on this test bench with the same setup, and you can see that the Hyper 212 EVO is only about 5 degrees cooler. But if you think of cooling as an exponential statistic, for every degree that is reduced, there is an exponentially greater cooling potential required. We'll get a better grasp of how this all pans out with more coolers in the future, but for now we'll have to leave it at that. So there we go, that's pretty much it. Uh, just a couple of points to make. First, before you shoot off and you want to check out other videos, uh, if you want to see better glam b-roll footage of this cooler, I think it's better coming from the Corsair Air 240 video done last week. Since there was an ability to be able to put lighting all around it and light up the fins and that sort of stuff, it actually looks really nice. So I'd recommend skipping to the end of that video if you want to go and check out that sort of thing. It's worth checking that video anyway, I think it was a pretty good one from this channel. So that's pretty much it. Um, the, the reason I have this cooler in the same graph comparing it to the Hyper 212 EVO is purely because the Hyper 212 EVO is the only other cooler that has been specifically tested on this test bench. This whole video series is relatively new to this channel so 
that's the reason why that is. You wouldn't naturally compare the two, they're two different sized coolers. They also have differences in fins, I mean the uh, Hyper 2 Delvio has something like 57 fins, this one has something like 45, so there's a large difference in the fins there, and the size of the fins, and that sort of thing. So, so you wouldn't naturally compare them, but that's the only reason that they are compared in this instance. We will eventually have a vast array of different CPU coolers that are tested, and yeah, so you'll you'll see it populate in the future. If you want to check out that in the future, then feel free to subscribe. And if you want to check out other um, different videos we've done on this channel or I've done on this channel, then uh, you can check out the Hyper 212 Evo and lots of different case ones. Um, but that's pretty much it. So thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. If you have any suggestions or comments, leave them in the video description, and I will check them out and have a chat with you then. Thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you next time. Bye.